I think I'll, I'll uh, start uh, right now. Um, uh, if uh, people don't come uh, to the class, uh, I will stop the uh, videos <laughs> uh, because uh, the uh, number of participants is dropping, you know, uh, constantly. I know it's very, very busy, the juries and everything are uh, taking part, but it would be uh, better for your sake uh, to, to see the uh, better quality pictures uh, in, in class. Anyway, so. Uh, yesterday we started out with the uh, Byzantine uh, period uh, after uh, Constantine and uh, we uh, embarked upon uh, the uh, 6th century uh, concentrating <coughs> upon uh, Emperor uh, Justinian. Uh, Emperor uh, Justinian uh, tried to uh, have a territorial uh, expansion uh, trying to uh, revive the uh, former uh, territories of the uh, Roman Empire to a certain extent, and he was successful in um, a certain number of his military expeditions, and he uh, managed to reconquer some of the uh, lands in um, uh, Italy. And uh, for this uh, reason, we find that uh, some of his uh, projects were to be found in uh, Ravenna, north of Rome. Part of this uh, newly acquired uh, state of affairs, this new uh, confidence, is the reason why a uh, ivory plaque, <laughs> like the one you see on the <coughs> screen, shows a, a triumphal uh, motif. If you had not known that uh, this uh, figure is uh, late, you may have thought that this is a very Roman iconography, conveying uh, triumph, conveying uh, military uh, success. But uh, we do know that it is uh, Byzantine, and most <laughs> probably the emperor uh, triumphant is uh, Justinian. It is triumphant because uh, you see the uh, military uh, theme. I mean, you uh, see the uh, conquered uh, peoples, you see the uh, welcoming of the uh, triumphant uh, uh, emperor uh, here. So, uh, with this uh, new energy, with this uh, new uh, confidence, we uh, find that the uh, architectural uh, projects also take an upward uh, swing. Uh, three uh, projects that we saw are uh, north of Rome, in uh, Ravenna, uh, two uh, mosaic programs uh, in uh, congregational <coughs> basilical churches, uh, San Apollinare in Classe. Is, is it Ravenna or Ravenna? Ravenna. R-A-E-N-N-A, Ravenna. But uh, when you uh, pronounce it, you say Ravenna, but it's written Ravenna. Uh, Two uh, projects are in uh, Saint Apollinare in Classe and Saint Apollinare uh, Nuovo. These two congregational basilical uh, churches in uh, Ravenna have a, a new style mosaic program, a rich mosaic uh, program. And then there is a, a third project, uh, which is an architectural and mosaic uh, project in San Vitale. So, Ravenna was a uh, ground where uh, Justinian chose to uh, have some of his uh, projects in the uh, West. He has no projects in uh, Rome, which is quite noteworthy. When we uh, look at the church of uh, San Apollinare in Classe, in uh, Ravenna, we see that uh, the church <coughs> from the uh, outside is rather traditional and anachronistic. It's in an old style. In other words, there's uh, nothing uh, very uh, progressive about this conservative architecture. It looks very much like an early Christian basilica. It has a central nave heightened with a clerestory lighting, and then it has flanking uh, aisles and an entrance uh, part. But what is uh, quite uh, novel in this uh, building is the uh, interior articulation, where uh, Justinian's uh, artists uh, uh, created a mosaic program, 
with uh, polychromy, with uh, marble uh, shafts here, marble uh, columns. And uh, this uh, mosaic uh, program is focusing on religious uh, themes, uh, Christian uh, themes. In this instance, we have uh, Christ as the uh, good uh, shepherd. Uh, the apostles are being uh, shown, 12 of them, the uh, 12 uh, apostles. So uh, the uh, uh, depiction of Christ in the center as the uh, good uh, shepherd is intended to point the right way to uh, humanity with the uh, teachings of uh, Christianity. <coughs> From an artistic point of view, what is novel uh, here is the uh, use of uh, mosaics for a religious uh, purpose and the utilization of uh, golden colored uh, mosaics in the background. The golden colored uh, mosaics act a little <coughs> bit like glass and because uh, they uh, create an uneven surface with the uh, diffused light touching uh, them, they uh, create a fragmentation of light which uh, creates an atmosphere very uh, suitable for the uh, spiritual uh, atmosphere of the uh, church. Here you see a uh, better close-up uh, version. The uh, focal uh, part, the uh, end which is the apse, and the high part of the uh, apse is given over to the cross, to uh, Christ, the uh, 12 uh, apostles depicted in the form of uh, sheep, and then the uh, fillings in between the uh, tall uh, windows again are given to uh, uh, figures, uh, the two sides <laughs> of which depict the uh, court, uh, the court of uh, Justinian, the palace of uh, Justinian, with the uh, highest uh, religious and uh, uh, imperial authorities of the uh, palace. So uh, what we have is the, uh, uh, the propagation of uh, Christianity, but with the support of the uh, palace. The church and the uh, palace are being represented uh, together, but the hierarchy is quite uh, clear. The, representat the representatives of the uh, palace are below, and uh, Christ <coughs> with the uh, cross is uh, above. The uh, rich marble you know, uh, decorations provide a, a setting for these uh, mosaics. So when you uh, look at the apse from the uh, side, you see the uh, differences in the texture, the uh, polychromatic uh, marble, which is carried to an even greater mastery in San Vitale. The depiction of the mosaics in the uh, 6th century are uh, rather uh, uh, the early in terms of the uh, evolution of this uh, art when we compare them to the mosaics that we shall see uh, later uh, today. Uh, <coughs> they are early in the sense that uh, they are rather linear. The uh, tesserae, which are the uh, small uh, bits and pieces of uh, stone and colored glass to create the uh, panels are done in a rather schematic, linear uh, manner. There is very little uh, volume, there is very little uh, three-dimensionality, there is uh, hardly uh, any uh, gradation of uh, color that we see uh, here. But still, from uh, a uh, distance, they create a uh, rather impressive uh, appearance. The uh, cross is uh, uh, complete with a representation of Christ in the uh, center. But what we did point out in this instance is the uh, simultaneous reflection of uh, richness. So uh, the uh, modesty of the uh, Christian uh, representations, artistic representation that we saw in the early Christian period <laughs> is now increasingly becoming more powerful and uh, rich. The uh, imperial uh, influences are being reflected to the Christian art as well. So uh, the uh, cross is uh, studded with uh, precious uh, jewelry and uh, very uh, <laughs> uh, precious and uh, expensive uh, looking uh, materials. So 
it is very uh, imperial uh, and very uh, powerful in uh, this uh, respect. The backgrounds of the figures uh, are uh, hardly uh, existent. There's no depth, there's no uh, perspective. The uh, scale is uh, not done in a very uh, grad graded uh, uh, manner. There's no uh, gradation. You see uh, representations of rocks, you see representations of uh, uh, trees and plants and shrubs and birds, all done without uh, very precise regard to uh, scale. They are just uh, background uh, fillers. So the important thing is to convey the Christian iconography, and these are uh, just the uh, background to fill in the uh, space. The other church, San Apollinare in Classe, also in uh, Ravenna, is uh, just like uh, San Apollinare, I mean San Apollinovo, sorry, is uh, just like San Apollinare in Classe, very conservative, an apse, a, a horizontal, longitudinal uh, plan, the progression of a, a colonnade dividing the uh, nave from the uh, aisles, but uh, no uh, vaults, nothing of that uh, creative, extraordinary architecture that the Romans had achieved in interior uh, space. That was uh, left aside altogether. But in San Apollinare uh, Nuovo uh, as well, uh, what we have is the uh, uh, articulation of the interior uh, space with the assistance of the uh, artist's mosaic uh, program. And in this uh, instance, uh, we find the uh, mosaics uh, articulating the uh, interior, not on the uh, apse, but on both sides. It's a horizontal building, as we uh, saw, uh, a very uh, conservative, <laughs> very uh, simple uh, plan. But uh, the uh, placement of the uh, figures in juxtaposition with the uh, rhythmic uh, ordering of the uh, colonnade, the uh, arched uh, colonnade, <laughs> the uh, arcade, <coughs> emphasizes the horizontality, the uh, movement toward the uh, apse. So uh, you have this emphatic uh, horizontality, but this is uh, not at all static. It's not a, uh, a static uh, dead uh, space with the uh, vertical accents, uh, the uh, steady vertical accents that are created with the uh, verticality of the columns, the verticality of the saints, then the verticality of the third story with the tall uh, windows uh, <coughs> creates a kind of spatial uh, tension bringing the uh, space uh, alive. And uh, the uh, idea of the marriage of uh, art and architecture is to be uh, reflected in this sense with the uh, movement of these uh, figures reflecting the uh, movement and progression of the uh, colonnades. The colonnades uh, terminate in the apse and the progression of the uh, saints, uh, male saints on one side and the female <coughs> saints on the other, uh, terminate uh, when uh, they uh, reach the uh, enthroned uh, Christ on one side and for the females the enthroned Virgin uh, Mary surrounded by uh, angels. Uh, so you have this uh, uh, the progression. Like uh, San Apollinare in Classe, where we saw the uh, bejeweled uh, cross, the uh, throne on which Christ is uh, seated is also studded with uh, jewels. This is a very uh, rich and powerful explanation, expression uh, and conveying of the uh, Christian uh, image and the image of uh, Christ. Uh, there's no modesty uh, here. Uh, there is the uh, power of Christ, and uh, he uh, is uh, depicted uh, conveying this uh, power. The golden uh, mosaics are uh, quite uh, effective in San Apollinare Nuovo uh, as well. Uh, they constitute the uh, background of the uh, male and female uh, saints and create an ethereal. Uh, atmosphere, an atmosphere which is uh, mysterious, an atmosphere which is uh, not uh, real because you don't know where it starts, where it ends. 
you don't know where the foreground is, where the uh, background uh, is. <coughs> Uh, if you uh, look at the uh, palm trees that fill in the spaces between each one of the uh, saints, you don't know if the palm trees are, you know, uh, right beside the saints, behind the saints, are they on the same uh, level where the uh, plants or the grass or the palmet is, uh, what is this doing uh, here, this uh, little floral uh, pattern. There is no foreground and background. And this uh, situation is accentuated even further with the uh, flickering of the, uh, the surface of the uh, thousands of tesserae which are stuck together. So when the light shines upon us, it acts in a very different way than it would have acted if you just had uh, golden colored paint on a flat uh, wall. But because this is not a flat surface, but a surface which has the <laughs> studdings of each one of the uh, individual uh, tesserae, you have this extraordinary illumination which uh, fragments and breaks up the uh, light, giving uh, this uh, ethereal uh, effect to the uh, background and then to the uh, church as a whole. Exactly the same thing happens on the opposite side where the female uh, saints are uh, proceeding toward Virgin uh, Mary and the Christ the child who is seated in her uh, lap. But in this case, you have the uh, three you know, uh, magi who are bearing uh, gifts to the uh, newborn uh, Christ uh, child, which is also a, a common uh, theme we see uh, in various depictions of the uh, period. Similar to uh, uh, Jesus uh, Christ, Virgin Mary is also seated on a uh, very uh, precious uh, throne. She is like an empress. Uh, she is like the uh, empress in the Constantinople, uh, like, like uh, Theodora. So uh, the uh, same uh, idea of uh, richness and power and the uh, uh, widespread you know, influence of the uh, Christian uh, religion, religion is revealed through this kind of uh, depiction of Virgin Mary and the Christ child. <coughs> uh, in a uh, similar uh, way, the uh, entourage of the uh, female saints with the uh, halos, with their uh, rich uh, draperies, are uh, reflecting a very uh, imperial uh, looking representation. So uh, while the uh, imperial rule of the emperor becomes uh, Christianized, we find the uh, effects of the, um, the imperial uh, rule imperializing, in a way, the Christianity uh, too, which we see in the uh, choices of the art forms. If the uh, Saint Apollinare in Classe and the Saint Apollinare Nuovo were rather uh, traditional buildings from an architectural point of view, that was certainly not the case for uh, San Vitale, the third uh, church. We do not know the architect for uh, San Vitale, but it is uh, well known that it was a Justinianic uh, project. It was not a uh, project uh, which uh, was uh, redeveloped or uh, restored. It's a Justinianic uh, project. And perhaps because of that, uh, we see uh, something of the uh, similarity to the uh, Roman uh, uh, the consciousness of uh, very uh, rich uh, forms. From the uh, exterior, we see here that there are uh, very uh, different uh, volumes that uh, cascade out of a central, verticalized, uh, high uh, volume and around a centralized uh, scheme, all <coughs> these uh, uh, rich uh, volumes are orchestrated uh, together. And uh, their um, uh, differences from each other are uh, accentuated by uh, stating their uh, individuality. But this individuality of the uh, independent uh, components is not done in such a way that there is a chaos or a kind of competition between these uh, different uh, forms. But uh, there is a uh, richness and variety because they are all subservient 
to a centralized, uh, unified uh, scheme. So you have rectilinear forms, then you have uh, polygonal uh, forms, you have uh, curved linear uh, uh, sort of uh, hemicycle uh, forms, and they all come out. <laughs> and uh, under each one, you have a kind of uh, perforation of the uh, wall, which allows tangents of uh, light from uh, different uh, heights and different sides of the uh, octagon to uh, illuminate the uh, very sophisticated uh, interior. And we saw two slides showing the juxtaposition of curved linear and uh, angled uh, uh, volumes that all um, envelope the uh, central uh, verticalized uh, space. Uh, we also uh, pointed at the uh, marking and the bordering of each you know, component to mark out that they are indeed uh, distinct, but uh, part of an overall uh, whole. So they don't uh, uh, compete with the forms uh, beside them, but they're part of one unified and designed uh, whole. The uh, plan of the uh, uh, San Vitale uh, church is also uh, very uh, sophisticated. You have a uh, rather calm center, a calm center which is high and verticalized, and around it is a uh, ambulatory uh, formed of an intricate array of uh, vaults, groin vaults, uh, barrel vaults, and the uh, boundary of the uh, ambulatory is formed by the uh, edges of the uh, octagon, uh, but also the uh, wedge-shaped uh, piers, uh, eight of them, from which uh, emanate uh, scalloped uh, entities defined with a further two uh, twin uh, columns in the uh, center. What uh, becomes uh, created in this manner is a very uh, sophisticated and uh, varied interior space experience. Uh, the uh, distant uh, glimpses that you have from any point of the church toward the uh, central apse or toward the uh, sides or from the center <laughs> to the uh, sides have a uh, the whole range of uh, experiences of uh, the darkness, shadow, and then uh, uh, the lesser shadows or a greater light. They're all uh, grad graded in uh, a, a range of uh, spatial uh, experiences. Um, one thing which we pointed out in this uh, instance, which is uh, not surprising when we uh, think about the uh, uh, significance of the congregational <coughs> longitudinal form is the directionality. Normally, in a centralized uh, church or in a centralized uh, building, uh, you don't have a particular uh, direction. You don't single out you know, one part of the uh, octagon. It's against the uh, nature of circular uh, forms. But uh, in San Vitale, we find out that uh, one side of the, uh, the, the polygon is uh, accentuated uh, with a greater hierarchical uh, significance, uh, and that is the uh, apse. It's almost like the uh, apse of a longitudinal uh, basilical uh, church, but this is not a basilical uh, church. And in that singled out, more important uh, part, uh, we uh, find uh, hierarchically the more significant uh, mosaics. The uh, mosaics which uh, depicted uh, uh, Christ and the mosaics which uh, depicted the uh, emperor and the uh, empress, Justinian and uh, Theodora. And uh, all the uh, rest of the, uh, the surfaces are uh, filled with uh, scenes from the life of Christ with uh, hierarchical uh, figures in the uh, uh, Christian uh, the sort of uh, uh, the, the division of uh, officials, and uh, also um, the usage of uh, texture, the usage of smooth, glossy you know, uh, marble, 
and the usage of capitals. The spatial variety, the uh, variety of uh, spatial experience forever changing within the uh, interior is accentuated even further by these uh, different uh, polychromatic and uh, sculptural effects uh, as well. So it's a very uh, rich uh, interior um, uh, made even more so with the usage of the uh, mosaics. So here is a side glimpse to the uh, apse. Uh, the <coughs> uh, this uh, part uh, here. And uh, in the uh, highest, most highest uh, the part is uh, the, the Christ uh, himself. And even though uh, Justinian and his wife, uh, Theodora, enjoy a uh, seat in the uh, trio of the uh, apse, they are relegated to the uh, sides and to the bottom. Uh, the uh, panel of uh, Christ is in the uh, center and it is uh, higher. So uh, for people who could not uh, read and write, who did not have uh, literacy in the sense we mean it uh, today, uh, they could uh, read the uh, pictorial uh, message and they knew who was important, but they also knew that uh, the uh, emperor uh, Justinian <laughs> was a uh, the significant you know, promoter of the Christian uh, religion. So the imperial art is uh, pumped with a very uh, Christianized uh, outlook in the uh, Justinianic uh, period. And here is the uh, panel of uh, Justinian uh, with his uh, officials of the uh, court and the uh, major uh, bishop showing the uh, golden uh, mosaic uh, here and giving a rather uh, theatrical <laughs> appearance as if they are on a stage, as if they are on the stage of the uh, theater. This is even more emphatic in the uh, mosaic of Theodora. Uh, there's even a uh, curtain, there are baldacchinos and uh, <coughs> uh, curtains uh, as if uh, the uh, uh, curtains of the uh, stage will be uh, closed or uh, open. And just like the uh, scenes that we saw in San Apollinare Nuovo, in San Vitale uh, too, these are uh, not uh, scenes, but these are the uh, ladies in the waiting and the uh, highest you know, uh, uh, ranking uh, women of the uh, palace in Constantinople, the seat of the imperial uh, power. And accordingly, uh, all the richness and all the uh, jewelry is uh, given in a full, uh, clear uh, uh, expression. There's nothing hidden here. There's nothing uh, suggested. The uh, tesserae, uh, in the early uh, uh, Byzantine uh, period, in the uh, sixth uh, century, is again uh, rather uh, uh, rough, uh, even though from a uh, distance you get an overall uh, image. But uh, there's still uh, several you know, uh, centuries in which to attain the more brush-like painterly uh, effect that will be uh, achieved. An overall scene, another uh, scene, showing again uh, the uh, court of uh, Justinian, Theodora, and then the majesty of uh, Christ in juxtaposition with every square centimeter of the uh, church, the ribs of the vault, the uh, vault itself, <coughs> the space uh, fillers, uh, and then the uh, colonnades. Every square centimeter is uh, covered either with a mosaic or some kind of uh, space filler or uh, gleaming, uh, glossy, shining uh, marble or uh, fresco. Um, the uh, capitals, the typical uh, basket uh, capitals of the uh, period are quite different than the classical uh, counterparts we saw uh, earlier. <laughs> they are more uh, massive, but the massiveness is uh, broken with a rather lace-like uh, treatment of the uh, surface, creating these uh, stylized uh, uh, moldings, uh, which are <laughs> floral uh, motifs. 
with the uh, addition of uh, Christian uh, symbols on the uh, surfaces. And these we see in a whole range of uh, uh, the choices in different parts of the uh, empire. Uh, while uh, these uh, significant uh, projects uh, took place in uh, Ravenna in the uh, West, uh, other uh, even more significant uh, experiments and uh, eclectic uh, trials were going on in the uh, East. In this uh, regard, we pointed at the uh, St. John uh, Church in Ephesus in uh, Western uh, Turkey. Uh, you all know uh, the ancient uh, site, the uh, famous Roman site of uh, Ephesus. It was uh, quite important in the Byzantine times as well. Uh, like the churches of Sena Polinare uh, in Classe and Sena Polinare Nuovo, uh, the church of St. John in Ephesus is a basilical uh, church. It's not centralized, it's a basilica, it's a, a longitudinal you know, church. It has uh, crossing uh, arms, but uh, what is uh, quite uh, unusual uh, here is that uh, you don't have a roofing system the way you would expect it. Normally in a basilical church, in the early Christian times, and uh, also in the uh, uh, Byzantine uh, times, you would expect a pitched uh, roof. But here, what you have instead are a, a series of uh, domes on a uh, longitudinal uh, the plan uh, type of the uh, congregational church. And uh, in this uh, regard, even though uh, the sequences are the same, when you have a, a courtyard providing the transition from the uh, profane to the semi-sacred, and then the uh, sacred space terminating your progression uh, toward the uh, apse and then uh, having a transverse uh, arm. Uh, you have a crossing uh, here, but uh, this uh, sequential uh, movement toward the uh, apse is compromised by the compartmentalization that is uh, created by the uh, domes, the several series of domes. So the domes are each you know, uh, carried on a set of you know, uh, piers, so you have the longitudinal uh, plan, but the uh, compartmentalization sort of um, uh, breaks up uh, the uh, emphatic you know, horizontality that you would have seen in uh, other you know, uh, traditional uh, churches of the basilical uh, type. The uh, sequence is even better seen in uh, the uh, sections of the transverse and the uh, main uh, nave of the uh, church. You see the uh, domes uh, here, and you also uh, see the uh, progressional uh, movement. The uh, experiments uh, continued in other uh, lesser known churches uh, as well. Sometimes we don't even know what happened. I mean, this is a tripartite church with central uh, uh, nave and uh, aisles. And we don't know uh, what kind of uh, roof was above this uh, church, for example, uh, in this example. But we do know that in the church of uh, St. Sergius and Bacchus in the Constantinople of uh, Justinian, which became uh, converted into a, a church later uh, on, this uh, compromise has reached an uh, even uh, greater uh, eclectic uh, state. Uh, we don't have a uh, central <coughs> circular you know, plan uh, here, but we also don't have a uh, traditional basilical uh, plan. What we have is a uh, rather square uh, frame. This uh, square frame is not even rectangular in, in uh, plan. There is a, a progression. There is an apse, like the apse of uh, San uh, Vitale, there are the uh, wedge-shaped uh, piers. There are the uh, scallops that uh, emanate from the wedge-shaped uh, piers. But there are barrel vaults in the intermediate uh, parts. So it's not scallops uh, all the way like uh, San Vitale. And yet, looking at uh, the uh, ambulatory here, looking at the uh, apse, looking at the wedge-shaped piers and the uh, scallops, 
and the overall uh, the squarish plan, which is not rectangular, it is easy to say that there is an influence between the two uh, churches. I mean, there are certain correspondences between the San Vitale and the uh, Saint Sergius in Bacchus uh, church. And needless to say, there is, I mean, no pitched roof uh, here, but a uh, roof which is, you know, uh, circular and a uh, dome. The uh, interior um, is uh, now uh, in its uh, later uh, restoration, in its uh, conversion into a uh, mosque. But still, uh, the plan can be uh, perceived. The uh, capitals are quite uh, rich, the basket uh, capitals. They are even finer than the uh, rather massive ones in the San Vitale. Uh, there are uh, uh, the waves of uh, carved uh, the floral uh, patterns uh, in a very uh, fine uh, workmanship of uh, stone. So, after all, we are now in the uh, capital of the Byzantine Empire. We are in the center of the empire. And if Justinian could uh, uh, send his artists to do the uh, projects in uh, Ravenna, he had even more means in his own uh, capital to have the uh, mastery of that you know, kind of uh, workmanship in uh, stone uh, carving. But uh, with all these uh, experiments uh, going on, all these uh, eclectic experiments, to juxtapose the longitudinal plan with the centralized uh, plan, uh, we uh, perhaps should not be uh, surprised at the um, very uh, unique uh, architecture that came about in the Hagia Sophia, which is the uh, court church of uh, Justinian in his capital. This is not an ordinary uh, public uh, church. It is a uh, church which uh, is uh, utilized on special ceremonial uh, occasions and it brings together the uh, church and the uh, palace. They are both you know, represented uh, here uh, together. Hence, uh, because of the significance of uh, bringing the church and the government uh, together uh, as a, a power uh, uh, image, uh, the uh, designers of the Hagia Sophia are no ordinary craftsmen. The uh, renowned uh, scientists of the time <coughs> were uh, hired and employed to design the uh, church. Anthemius of uh, Trales, uh, Aydam, and Isidorus of uh, Miletus were the uh, scientists who were uh, brought to uh, design the uh, church. So it was uh, designed in every way, in the plan, in the elevation, in image, in the iconography, to suit the uh, demands and the scenario of this very uh, special you know, uh, project that was to uh, be uh, designed as a prime uh, architectural achievement of Justinianic uh, times. So the uh, result is a, a new uh, building type that we might call a domed basilica. When, when you talk about a basilica, you hardly think about a dome. But what the Hagia Sophia is, is a domed basilica. Uh, a uh, basilical uh, understanding, but the basilical understanding united with a, uh, the verticalized uh, domical uh, scheme. So it is uh, uh, a kind of a longish uh, uh, church, as you uh, can see, because of this uh, basilical uh, the character that it uh, has. The uh, uh, height of the uh, dome and the uh, church appears um, uh, more shallow than might be expected in an uh, ordinary uh, uh, centralized uh, church. But uh, we have to keep in mind the um, uh, restorations in the time of uh, Justinian and also uh, later uh, uh, times when the uh, dome was uh, changed a little uh, bit. The uh, significance of the church is uh, conveyed at the uh, entrance, uh, at the uh, entrance of the church to the uh, side. Uh, we have a uh, panel showing a Christ child seated in the lap of uh, Virgin Mary, enthroned, uh, of course, 
And uh, this uh, the, the, the arrangement is uh, flanked on both uh, sides by uh, no other, uh, no lesser figures than Constantine, the uh, founder of the city of Constantinople, named after himself, and the uh, uh, Emperor uh, Justinian, who is uh, uh, donating a uh, church to fit the uh, significance of the uh, city founded by Emperor Constantine. So, uh, by uh, acknowledging and by honoring Constantine, Justinian is also glorifying himself because uh, he is in a line of continuity. He is not an upstart you know, emperor. He has restored the uh, Roman uh, power, which is even uh, more powerful because it is now a Christianized power. He also has uh, the, uh, the power of you know, uh, Christianity, which he is helping to, um, to uh, propagate. So uh, the uh, city and the uh, church had to be a sort of an ecclesiastical and imperial ensemble conceived uh, together. And the Hagia Sophia can't be understood if you don't think of the imperial uh, aspect and you can't understand the Christian art of the Byzantine, uh, early Byzantine uh, period if you don't think of the imperial aspect. They are uh, knitted uh, to, uh, together, feeding uh, each other. The uh, domed basilica of the uh, Hagia uh, Sophia uh, has, as you might uh, expect, a, a directionality. I mean, the directionality that we saw in San Vitale, the directionality we saw in St. Sergius and uh, Bacchus in the uh, apse is uh, also present uh, here. You have a uh, courtyard which doesn't survive today. You have a double uh, entrance. And once you gain access to the uh, interior, you are uh, confronted with this uh, horizontal you know, uh, scheme uh, which is uh, 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 generated by the uh, apse at the end of one of the long uh, sides. But uh, there is a uh, tremendous uh, tension because you have a cross axis. You have the horizontal processional axis, the uh, axis of uh, the, the procession toward the uh, uh, apse, but you also have the crossing of a symbolic vertical axis. The symbolic vertical axis, that is the axis from the uh, topmost part of the uh, dome to the uh, floor. So you have this spatial you know, uh, tension and uh, richness from the uh, crossing of these uh, two uh, axes, a symbolic one and then a, a physical longitudinal one. Other than that, the overall scheme of the Hagia Sophia is unnervingly simple. All you have is four uh, piers, a set of four uh, piers, and the entire uh, design is uh, based on the uh, vaults and the uh, dome uh, emanating from these four uh, piers. With the help of these four uh, piers, the uh, 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 boundaries of the uh, dome are uh, expanded. Uh, there are uh, hemicycles, half domes on both the sides. So uh, the dome uh, and the space underneath the uh, dome looks very much uh, larger compared to uh, the uh, dome of uh, the Pantheon, uh, for example. And then uh, the uh, hemicycles are expanded and cascaded outwards in the form of uh, smaller uh, hemicycles uh, here. So you have this space which keeps flowing outward, uh, a very uh, dynamic uh, interior uh, space. Uh, there are uh, two stories to the, uh, the Hagia uh, Sophia, the central ceremonial uh, space, and then there are galleries in the uh, top part on the uh, aisles, shall we say. I mean, if that is the uh, nave, then uh, these uh, are essentially the aisles of the uh, church. And then in the uh, aisles, you uh, have the uh, places for the uh, female, you know, uh, 
parts of the uh, palace, uh, Theodora and her uh, entourage. So the uh, presence of the uh, imperial you know, uh, family in the uh, church is very, very significant. Uh, a court uh, church in uh, the most literal uh, as well as symbolic sense of the uh, word. The uh, system we said is quite uh, simple. You have huge uh, arches that uh, swing, you know, uh, to span the uh, spaces, and then they carry the uh, dome, which is uh, uh, raised on uh, pendentives, the uh, transition from a uh, rectilinear frame to a uh, curvilinear one, as you uh, see uh, here. So, uh, we can talk about a dematerialization of uh, the, uh, the physical uh, planes uh, here, the uh, dome appears as if it is uh, suspended on these uh, thin uh, supports because of this <laughs> pendentive uh, device, while uh, the church appears to be uh, extended. Uh, the, uh, the height of the, uh, the church is again um, uh, the higher than the uh, pantheon, and uh, the, uh, the human figures, which I can't you know, show uh, here, give you, uh, if you have been to the Hagia Sophia, you probably get a sense of the uh, you know, uh, belittling effect of the uh, space. You do feel the atmosphere of the uh, heavens. I mean, you feel the power of uh, Christianity in uh, a rather a spiritual uh, sense, uh, not only a, a physical uh, sense. The uh, richness of the uh, decorations, which are now coming to light again. There is a uh, uh, restoration which is uh, going on uh, now under the aegis of the uh, culture uh, ministry. And uh, the uh, Hagia Sophia as um, a significant building, an iconic uh, building, continued to also in the later ages. Uh, after um, uh, the, the, the Fatih Sultan uh, Mehmet, Mehmet the Conqueror, uh, uh, took over uh, Istanbul uh, and uh, made it his own uh, capital. Uh, there were uh, Ottoman additions to the uh, church uh, as well. And these uh, centuries of uh, Ottoman additions are not uh, a small period. I mean, uh, the church was uh, uh, used as a uh, mosque for a very, very long uh, period of uh, time. And now it is being used as a uh, museum. So when the church is being you know, restored uh, today, um, uh, the justice will be done to the significance of uh, Justinian's project. Uh, if uh, the uh, uh, different uh, stages of the uh, church are also acknowledged. Uh, Justinian probably never thought that uh, his church would be used for so many uh, centuries, but it was. So it's a very special project. And it accommodated uh, the uh, center of uh, Orthodox you know, Christianity, but it also accommodated uh, Muslim worship for many centuries. So uh, the uh, museum aspect of the uh, church uh, today, I think, is quite significant to acknowledge the rich history of uh, Turkey, uh, embracing all these uh, different you know, civilizations and their beliefs. So highlighting just the Byzantine or highlighting just the mosque you know, part would do an uh, injustice to the uh, church. So uh, the uh, rich marbles that we saw in uh, the uh, San Vitale uh, are also in uh, the Hagia Sophia many different marbles, just like the uh, marbles of the Romans coming from all over the reconquered you know, Byzantine uh, Empire were uh, lavishly uh, utilized within uh, the, uh, the, the imperial uh, project of the uh, church. And this is a significant point because uh, the uh, richness of the marbles, the uh, exquisite uh, craftsmanship that was uh, used in the Hagia Sophia was not utilized in the uh, palace itself. This is a far more important uh, project than the uh, palace of the uh, emperor. It's uh, the uh, project uh, which uh, got the, uh, the lion's uh, share 
of the imperial uh, treasury. So uh, a uh, nighttime uh, view uh, of the Hagia Sophia to show you uh, some of the uh, perforations. The Hagia Sophia was such a special uh, project that uh, after um, Justinian uh, died, uh, there was no other you know, Hagia Sophia that was uh, built. The imperial uh, treasury was you know, uh, spent. The uh, scientists, together with the architects, uh, created this you know, uh, project. So a bit like the Pantheon, or uh, a bit like the uh, Parthenon in their own uh, times, it became such an iconic uh, building that uh, uh, from a design point of view, it was uh, difficult to imitate, but also from an iconographical uh, point of view, uh, this was a special project of the uh, Justinianic uh, times, and uh, the um, fate of the uh, Byzantine uh, Empire had many fluctuations after uh, Justinian, and for 300 um, you know, uh, years or more, uh, the, uh, the territories were uh, conquered, lost, reconquered. There were lots of you know, vicissitudes. And uh, in fact, in 1204, in the uh, early, in the beginning of the 13th century, uh, Constantinople was uh, sacked by uh, Latin invaders. And uh, many uh, artworks and uh, riches were uh, taken over to uh, Venice, especially, and to other parts of uh, Europe. And then it was, you know, retaken. Uh, so in this uh, atmosphere of uh, turmoil and um, uh, sort of uh, the lack of uh, uniform, uh, you know, uh, peace and uh, uh, the um, uh, smooth running of the uh, state, it is not surprising that the projects that we see uh, are uh, also uh, very different in character. Uh, until the Justinianic age, what we saw was uh, a kind of uh, effort to get together uh, the uh, centralized plan, the longitudinal plan of the basilical uh, church, and then the uh, centralized plan being united under a uh, dome and also aggrandizing this, monumentalizing it in a uh, grand uh, scale. Well, in the uh, late uh, Byzantine uh, period, uh, in the uh, post-Justinianic uh, period, uh, say in the 13th you know, century and uh, so on, what we uh, have is a, uh, a whole uh, array in different parts of the Byzantine uh, Empire, small churches, churches which are far more, far smaller in uh, scale. If we uh, look at uh, this uh, uh, the small church in uh, Italy, uh, San Stilo in uh, Calabria, uh, what uh, we see is uh, dramatically apparent. We see a far smaller scale and uh, we see uh, uh, a compartmentalization the uh, church is compartmentalized, uh, even though it is uh, small. And uh, we also see a new uh, development, uh, domes raised on uh, drums, mushroom-like uh, you know, uh, uh, entities in this uh, case. And this uh, smaller case, smaller scale, um, compartmentalize the churches uh, as if to uh, make up for this uh, smaller uh, scale, have uh, a, a rather articulated exterior. The exterior gains importance again. So when you look at San Stilo in Calabria, you see uh, ornaments in the soft you know, texture of the uh, brick, uh, highlighting the arches here, using different uh, patterns. So the exterior uh, gains uh, importance uh, in the uh, uh, the late Byzantine uh, churches. Here uh, you see another example. Again, the elevated domes, small domes elevated in uh, the form of uh, drums and kept with the small uh, domes. And then look at the exterior. You have a stone, you have a brick, they are all mixed together. There are checkered uh, patterns. There are recessions for the you know, uh, windows. 
uh, here uh, as if uh, you are uh, paving the way to the Romanesque period. So this uh, polychromy, uh, this uh, color, the uh, differences in uh, texture and the articulation of the uh, exterior make up for the uh, lost you know, uh, scale that we see in these uh, compartmentalized, smaller uh, scale uh, churches. But what we do see, which is uh, extraordinary, is a flourishing of the mosaic art. I mean, after the, uh, uh, the ninth and then the uh, 13th century, we see that uh, the Hagia Sophia uh, receives more mosaics more uh, imperial uh, mosaics. And then uh, we have a, a significant church in uh, Istanbul, uh, which we know as uh, Kariye uh, Jami uh, today, which is the Saint Savior in the uh, Korah. We have some of the most extraordinary you know, examples of mosaic art that has ever, ever been uh, created. First, we shall look at some of the uh, mosaic, you know, uh, uh, late Byzantine uh, mosaics in the Hagia Sophia. Uh, in the uh, apse in the 9th century, you have uh, Christ Child and the uh, Virgin uh, Mary still uh, utilizing the uh, golden colored uh, mosaics that were uh, uh, initiated in the time of uh, Justinian. But in the upper part of the church, in the uh, galleries, we have a series of uh, mosaics which depict the uh, later uh, emperors. Um, this one, uh, for example, is uh, Saint John uh, Komnenos with his uh, wife uh, Irene, and uh, they are both uh, flanking Virgin Mary and the Christ uh, Child. Here is uh, Irene. She is uh, uh, less uh, linear, perhaps, than the 16th you know, uh, century, but still does not have that uh, fine, you know, uh, mosaic. Uh, the painterliness that we shall see uh, later. But the reason I'm showing uh, these is to show that uh, uh, the uh, mosaic art of the later uh, Byzantine period is still continuing the uh, marriage of the uh, church and the court. The uh, emperors and their wives are being uh, shown uh, in the uh, context of the uh, uh, Christian uh, iconography. So, uh, a better picture than the one before, but the same one, so showing uh, St. John uh, Komnenos II uh, with the Christ child and uh, Irene, and then another figure of Irene on, on the uh, side. And uh, not very far uh, from that, also on the second story of the Hagia uh, Sophia, is uh, uh, Constantine the uh, ninth, the ninth uh, Constantine, who is sometimes known as the Monomachos, you don't need to remember this, and with his wife, uh, Zoe. Uh, they uh, are also uh, flanking uh, Christ. Christ is holding the sacred you know, uh, book. He has a, a special you know, uh, symbol, the testless you know, symbol, so the finger is, the hand is shown in that uh, gesture, and uh, both the emperor and the empress, Zoe, and uh, Constantine IX, the uh, Monomachos, are shown in a slightly you know, smaller uh, scale than enthroned uh, Christ, who uh, dominates not only the uh, heavens, but also the Byzantine uh, realm. The uh, most uh, spectacular mosaics, uh, however, uh, are in the uh, Hagia uh, Sophia, are to be seen in these uh, deesis uh, panels, uh, D-E-E-S-I-S, -E -E -S, and this terminology you should know. The deesis uh, panels show uh, usually uh, Christ and then uh, Jesus Christ. Then they show Virgin Mary and uh, Saint John the Baptist, Vaftizji Yahya, Ben Maryamana, uh, together with uh, Jesus uh, Christ. And that uh, trio uh, is usually known as the deesis, uh, you know, uh, composition, the thesis uh, panel. And we have a very fine uh, thesis uh, panel in the uh, gallery, the south uh, gallery of the Hagia uh, Sophia. 
We have the, uh, the tesserae, the golden colored uh, tesserae. But when we look at the faces of Virgin Mary, Christ, and St. John the uh, Baptist, we find that the uh, tesserae have become smaller, very, very tiny, very different than uh, the, the ones, you know, a few centuries ago that we saw in uh, San Vitale with a large, you know, tesserae. These uh, create a painterly effect. They use uh, uh, the uh, fine gradations of very different colored uh, tesserae, not creating a linear expression, but showing uh, the uh, pinkness of the cheeks uh, even, or the uh, uh, waves of the uh, beard. Many different shades of brown, many different shades of uh, beige, pink, uh, red, and uh, they give a, a rather uh, fleshy uh, effect, almost like the uh, paint uh, brush. As a result, when you uh, look at the face of uh, Christ uh, here, uh, the uh, eyes are rather soft. There's almost a, a very sad look about him, uh, a soft, poignant uh, look. Uh, the uh, beard is also done in a rather fine uh, manner. So the uh, highest uh, peak of uh, mosaic art in being able to uh, convey a subdued you know, emotion is now achieved with the uh, mosaic artists who are uh, working in uh, the, uh, the, the Constantinople of the uh, late Byzantine uh, period. Another view of you know, uh, the uh, Christ, uh, again, uh, look at the softness of the eyes. Uh, basic lines uh, here uh, outlining the uh, irises is heightening the gaze of the uh, eyes in a very uh, humane uh, manner. Similarly, uh, Virgin Mary also has uh, the uh, gradations of the mosaics. There is no uh, brush uh, here. Uh, they are just uh, thousands of little, uh, uh, tiny little stones that are stuck you know, uh, together giving shades underneath the uh, eyes, highlighting the uh, lips, giving a kind of shade and highlight to the uh, cheekbones, and the slight bending of the uh, head uh, here also enhances the uh, soft uh, look. Even more dramatic is the uh, facial uh, rendering of St. John the uh, Baptist. You look at the waves of the uh, beard, I don't know how many shades of uh, brown, gray, black, uh, beige, or yellow, or mustard color, you know, there is uh, here. But each one of them has been used in a masterful uh, way also to delineate the uh, rather disheveled, uh, uh, longish uh, hair. Uh, and uh, the uh, tesserae are also uh, framing the uh, head to um, uh, enhance that flickering uh, effect of the uh, uh, mosaic that breaks up the uh, light, giving the appropriate uh, spiritual uh, background to these uh, figures. The uh, height of the mosaic art, though, is uh, to be seen uh, in the uh, Saint Savior in the uh, Cora, which was uh, renovated uh, in the uh, uh, the 13th, well, rather in the 14th uh, century. And the renovation of this uh, church was done uh, by a, a person whom we know, uh, Theodore Metokites, and uh, he renovates the church of St. Savior in the Cora, which was an earlier uh, church. And this uh, restored and uh, enriched uh, church, enriched with the uh, mosaics, is being uh, presented to the enthroned uh, Christ. So uh, just like uh, Justinian and, uh, uh, the, and uh, Constantine were presenting the, uh, the church and the city to uh, Christ, Theodore Metokites is uh, presenting his own uh, church to uh, Christ several uh, centuries uh, later. And he's advertising this in the <laughs> mosaic panel the Saint Savior in the Cora uh, Church here, uh, Kariye Jami, as we know it uh, today, but which is a uh, museum, 
uh, is uh, one of the uh, typical late Byzantine uh, churches. Uh, as you see uh, here, it is highly compartmentalized. You have a, a central uh, the, the space covered by a, a dome. And then uh, you have uh, additional uh, spaces, which, by the way, belong to different uh, periods. It's not one uh, single uh, big you know, project. And uh, you have the compartmentalization even uh, further. The uh, double entrances that you have uh, here are each compartmentalized. And this compartmentalization is um, uh, accentuated by the uh, uh, usage of uh, uh, decoration, the uh, mosaics and the uh, frescoes. Two major components exist. Uh, the uh, major church popper, which is uh, preceded by a uh, double you know, uh, entrance, and then uh, a funerary uh, chapel. Uh, known as the Paraclesium, but you don't need to remember this uh, name. The uh, Paraclesium has uh, frescoes in addition to, uh, to uh, uh, mosaics, but the iconography of all is uh, very uh, Christian. So for people who were not uh, literate in uh, reading and writing uh, words, verbal uh, knowledge, the uh, visual uh, knowledge was uh, conveyed in the most didactic way. You learned about the religion, you learned about the cycles of the life of Christ, you learned about the hierarchy of uh, the Christian you know, officials just by uh, following your you know, uh, eye along the uh, church. So the uh, hierarchy of the uh, uh, marriage of uh, art and uh, architecture uh, gave a lot of uh, knowledge about what was uh, significant, what was the uh, narrative, and what was the uh, message. At the uh, entrance uh, parts, for example, the uh, panels uh, which uh, are within the uh, church give rather narrative uh, scenes about the episodes of Christ's uh, life. Uh, and these are uh, at the entrance and they are horizontal. But as you get toward the you know, uh, center, and as you uh, get toward the uh, dome, you have a Christ Pantocrator, Christ at the very you know, uh, top, being the most important uh, panel. So you have a, a gradation of the uh, arrangement of the uh, mosaic uh, panels in this highly compartmentalized uh, church signifying to the uh, people uh, the uh, messages which they should uh, know about uh, being a good uh, Christian. So uh, this is, in a way, uh, not only a high you know, uh, artistic uh, achievement in the service of uh, religion, but it is also a very didactic art because it aims to educate the uh, people uh, by uh, reading and recognizing these, these uh, images. So to give some examples, uh, from uh, the, um, uh, the entrance, we said that uh, there is a, a gradation of importance as you go uh, inside and as you go up. The hierarchy is, is you know, uh, increased. Uh, at the uh, entrances, in some parts, you have just the plain, rich marble uh, plaques, not even uh, any you know, uh, scenes being uh, depicted. But then you have uh, important uh, scenes from the uh, life of uh, Christ, uh, which uh, you probably recognize uh, quite uh, well. In this uh, panel, you see the uh, birth of uh, Christ. I mean, the Virgin Mary uh, conceived uh, Christ in a rather miraculous uh, way. Uh, and uh, uh, Christ the child is born, we know. I mean, this is the nativity scene. The nativity uh, scene shows the uh, birth of Christ usually and the scenes associated with the birth of uh, Christ. And it's usually uh, shown uh, in the context of a, a mountain or a, a cave. And uh, we have a series of uh, related scenes, uh, not uh, unified, 
in uh, one set uh, scene. Uh, there are several uh, episodes and the places and the uh, time of these episodes are sprinkled about the, uh, the, the composition. So you have Virgin Mary who has given birth. We know Christ's child is born because uh, he is in the you know, uh, manger and he is being you know, uh, uh, lit by a uh, light from the uh, heavens and the uh, breath of uh, you know, uh, animals in the you know, uh, stable, a uh, donkey uh, you can see, is, and their breath is uh, heating the newborn uh, Christ you know, uh, child uh, here. And then um, uh, you have the, uh, the baptism of you know, Christ being born. Uh, the Joseph, I mean the husband of Virgin you know, Mary, is in deep you know, uh, thought. And all these uh, scenes, they are connected. They are part of the episode, but they are put uh, uh, independent of the specific time. So rather than reading the pages of the book, you look at one scene, and then you get the whole you know, progression of the story of the, uh, the birth of Christ and the related uh, events in the nativity uh, scene. Another well-known scene is the massacre of the innocents. Uh, when uh, the Herod, uh, the uh, uh, great, uh, the uh, king of the uh, Jews uh, in uh, Judea, uh, heard that uh, a new king of uh, the, uh, the Judeans was uh, being born. He saw this as a threat to his own you know, uh, rule, and he ordered the massacre of all the babies below the age of two. So the uh, soldiers are going from house, they're getting the orders from Herod, they're going from house to house, uh, they're getting the uh, babies you know, from the mothers. Here's a terrified you know, mother, he has heard a child being you know, uh, uh, taken uh, by uh, the uh, soldier uh, here. So that scene is also uh, shown. So you don't need to read about this. You read it uh, visually in the uh, entrance to the uh, Saint Savior in the uh, Korah. And then from the uh, baptism of Christ, you have the ascension of uh, Christ. He is being uh, blessed, the apotheosis. And then uh, in a higher uh, level, you have a, a serious Christ with the uh, book uh, giving the uh, you know, messages to the uh, people to set them on the right uh, path. And uh, on another scene, uh, you uh, have you know, Virgin Mary and the Christ with a rather serious uh, look, but also with the uh, golden uh, colored uh, mosaics. The uh, tesserae that you see being used here, I mean hundreds of uh, tesserae uh, are uh, giving the uh, effects of light and shade. So Gon is the linear schematized depiction that we saw in the early Christian period, in the, the Justinianic uh, period, but uh, we have a very painterly uh, effect. Uh, here uh, you see the usage of uh, shades by using light and dark you know, colored uh, tesserae to uh, convey a kind of subdued emotion, a rather humane facial uh, look to the uh, faces of these uh, figures. But uh, above all, uh, what we see in the uh, uh, Saint Savior in the uh, Korah is the uh, gradation, the hierarchical uh, gradation. Christ the uh, Pantocrator, Christ who is uh, all-powerful, Christ who sees all, is in the innermost and highermost uh, part. And uh, metaphorically, from uh, Christ emanate the uh, rays of Christian uh, teachings with the various authorities of the, uh, the, 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 the uh, Christian uh, hierarchy. And uh, the uh, more significant ones are on top, and then the uh, lesser ones, and then you have the uh, pendentives with the narrative stories, and you have a whole series of uh, gradation. So the people entering these uh, churches uh, got the spiritual atmosphere, but they also learned about uh, scenes that they had heard about. 
these were consolidated and ingrained and inscribed in their minds because uh, what was told you know, verbally was now uh, very uh, apparent in the uh, visual uh, terms and of course uh, very uh, effective as well. The golden colored uh, mosaics, like the rays of the sun, are uh, spreading the, you know, uh, the teachings in a metaphorical uh, way and uh, the teachings emanate from the uh, book and uh, Christ uh, himself uh, seated at the uh, highest, uh, highest uh, part of the uh, church. And then uh, the uh, uh, messengers of uh, Christ, the officials who uh, have the duty to uh, spread the uh, messages and the uh, teachings are also uh, relegated to the uh, dome. So the figures are depicted in a longitudinal uh, manner among the uh, scallops, which are like the uh, rays, so they accentuate the effect of the dome, as if the teachings are raining from the sky, the teachings are being uh, emanated like the uh, rays of the uh, sun. In the uh, uh, funerary uh, church to the uh, side, which was a later uh, addition, the stories are even more didactic. There are uh, mosaics, but there are also uh, frescoes, some very fine uh, frescoes, which paved the way to some uh, pre-Renaissance uh, paintings like uh, Giotto, which we uh, know very well from uh, Italy. And uh, in this uh, very famous uh, panel, you see uh, Christ taking uh, Adam and Eve uh, from uh, the gates of hell. I mean, the uh, gates of hell are uh, broken, the uh, locks are uh, broken, and uh, Christ is uh, saving Adam and Eve. So he is saving humanity through Adam and uh, Eve. Uh, and uh, the, the uh, whole uh, scene is accentuated with the rather luminous, uh, transparent uh, depiction of uh, Christ. So when you look at the scene, the moment you enter the room, the uh, whiteness and luminosity, I mean, attracts the attention. So it's a visual, you know, uh, trick, accentuating what is most important, and you're affected by it. White is also a very innocent uh, color, so that uh, also uh, heightens the spiritual uh, effect. And the didactic uh, stories um, also uh, uh, reveal, you know, what will happen if you are not a good Christian, if you sin, if you're not good and you uh, engage in evil you know, uh, deeds, if you're a sinner, then uh, your soul you know, uh, will be uh, weighed. And then uh, if the sins weigh uh, heavier, then marsh, marsh, marsh. You, you know, go to uh, perish in the uh, fires of you know, hell. And this was a rather terrifying uh, scene, uh, which again uh, inscribed you know, <laughs> teachings to, to the uh, uh, the uh, people. And you see a deistic scene uh, here, Virgin Mary, Saint John the Baptist, and uh, Christ, all uh, arranged in a uh, halo uh, here. The uh, hell uh, scene uh, here <laughs> is uh, even more dramatically uh, done. Uh, the, uh, uh, the sinning uh, souls are, you know, uh, in a rather sad, you know, uh, array. Uh, thrown into uh, hell to uh, meet their uh, fate uh, and uh, Christ is a uh, judge you know here together with Virgin Mary and Saint John the uh, Baptist to uh, set the people on a good uh, path and he is helping the people I mean uh, uh, Adam and Eve the gates of hell are broken uh, loose and uh, the uh, uh, fleshiness of the uh, uh, legs are shown underneath the you know, uh, drapery. And he is the uh, savior of humanity. I mean, he is known as the savior. And uh, the uh, uh, fresco uh, here uh, shows that in uh, a most uh, impressive kind of uh, manner. Now, I don't uh, want to introduce anything new, but I want to show uh, a regional manifestation. Uh, in uh, Cappadocia, in the central uh, Turkey, 
we have a rather uh, unusual uh, geological uh, formation. I uh, will not go into those uh, details uh, now, but I will uh, repeat it. But in uh, Cappadocia, uh, we have a rather extraordinary uh, instance of um, uh, Christian you know, uh, architecture, which should not be uh, confused with the uh, ordinary dwellings. I mean, usually uh, we find a, a non-discriminate labeling that these are all you know, monks, monks lived here. Far from it. Some of it was very secular. There were mansions which were carved, which had nothing to do with religion. But when we look at the religious uh, units, the, uh, uh, design, uh, the design uh, premise is different because this is not additive but subtractive architecture. And uh, within these, uh, uh, there is an imitation of uh, the uh, major uh, forms of uh, Christian architecture that you see in major uh, cities. And it is not structural. I mean, if you uh, move one of the uh, columns, nothing will uh, happen. And they are trying to imitate the uh, battle vaults and then the hierarchies of the mosaics, the most important mosaic in the apse, the most important at the top of the uh, barrel uh, vault. They are even putting in the uh, pendentives. I mean, you don't need a pendentive in a carved you know, a church. Uh, but to show that this is like a real church where you have a transition from a rectilinear to a curvilinear form, the uh, dome. The dome is quite shallow, but you still paint pendentives there to make it look like a real uh, church. Uh, this uh, dome hardly has any uh, depth, but it gains more significance by uh, making it like a dome by uh, putting Christ Pantocrator in the uh, center. And in some of the other churches, the uh, barrel walls have painted bricks as if to uh, give the uh, solidity of uh, cut uh, stone uh, architecture. And you see a similar you know, dome uh, here. Uh, I shall not go into the uh, detailing or the phases uh, here, but you see that the uh, arches are delineated together with the paint to make them look more uh, architectural. And in these, you have a huge variety. You have uh, cross uh, churches. You have uh, churches uh, with uh, the uh, you know, uh, Christian uh, liturgical you know, uh, requirements. And you have the Quincunx uh, 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 churches, which seem to be compartmentalized. And they have uh, four columns in the center with uh, domes in each you know, side, giving a, a cross inscribed in a, a square. None of this is built. It is all you know, carved, and every square centimeter of it is covered with you know, uh, frescoes, just like ordinary uh, churches in the uh, capital and uh, elsewhere. So this is a very uh, idiosyncratic regional manifestation of the uh, you know uh, Byzantine uh, church uh, art thank you see you uh, next week